every time, no. I would like to personally welcome you to Man Hour, out the dark. Say that thing. Why bring you the host, Mike, Buck, get calm. You know they come on to the stage. Sports talk, what you about to hear right here. I second that. Go. You know that that's us when we talking about sports Giving you facts on the field to the core Tune in, we need the support One hour too short, then listen some more On all your station, not dropping no music Starts like Adidas, but Nike just do it Down four and the fourth, we go for the win Michael, two seconds, we taking it in Buck, Mike, and Combs, you know what's going on Man, now we're out the dark, no LA We the big spark, no fourth and inches Won't cut short, got the best talk in this all sports Buzzing more than buzzer beaters We coming live, all through your speakers, go and what is up, guys? Michael Buckhouse are here with the Man Hour. Head over to manhour.com and pick yourself up some merchandise. We got hoodies. We got beanies. We got everything you can think of. We also got one of the newest trolling videos that I'll be dropping here in the next couple weeks. But first, let's welcome Brandon Combs to the show. Brandon, what's what going on today, going man? What's going on? Man, look, I-, I tell you right now, your boy Joe, man. I hear you got a, a basketball game coming up in, in Florida, do. man. You, you got to go down and uh, get dunked on, yeah, um, by uh, by by Super Joe. Yeah, uh, Joe is six three, uh, two forty, I think he said, and 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 he is a baller. He uh, he uh, posted a picture of 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 him flying above the rim, and I'm scared. I ain't gonna lie. I, I, I'm hey, like man. I am scared. I never played. At basketball least you'll before. end up on a poster, right? Hey, sell those babies. But <laughs> speaking of somebody that scares me anymore, Kyron Montgomery, a Missouri Tiger commit from here, from Indianapolis, Indiana. Kyron, what's going on, man? How you doing, my man? Uh, we are great. We are great. We are great. So, like I was saying, you are a four-star recruit coming from Indianapolis, Indiana. What started you on the football journey right off the bat? I think Looks we lost like, Kyron. Yeah, we're 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 having a little bit of technical difficulties with him. Like we have some, like we have some weird rain going through town right now. So once he gets get gets back, we'll definitely add him back on. So Brandon, let, let's go ahead and pop some of his highlights on it. Like, like let's check, let's check, like on like on here, man. He is. 6'4", 251. These are his junior highlights. I mean, he is just a man among boys out there. Like, it is absolutely, absolutely ridiculous the way this this young man, <laughs> like, can, like, do stuff. So, man, I'm always amazed with these high school athletes nowadays because I remember when I was in high school, man, we weren't as big, strong, and fast as they are now, man. Well, you're still not big and fast and strong now. So, Kyron, no. welcome back to the show, man. We're watching some of your highlights here, and you are a edge rusher, man. Like, you get to the quarterback, and you get to him in a very, very bad mood. What what, what drives you on that field? Just, just being able to play, man. Just to dominate the opponent in front of me. Just do my job, and definitely for my teammates and my family. So you you got offers from Florida State, Penn State, Washington State, Kansas. Uh, man, I'm 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 glad you you did not pick Kansas because I am a Kansas State guy myself. But what what made you go to the University of Missouri out of all those other schools? I was getting recruited by uh, Coach Drink at App State, and it just it just felt like a it just feel like home to me. All the coaches, I got the home feeling. I got a gear relationship with Elon, coach, outside linebackers, coach, the head coach. So yeah. I just feel like you're the best place for me at the time. Columbia is a nice city too. Like I, so I absolutely. Lo- so the Tigers used to be in the Big Twelve back in the day when I used to play, and and I used to love going to Columbia. It was a great time after the game, gate time, be before the game, and it was just it was it was just a great time over there. So, how long have you like? When did you start playing ball? Was it fourth grade, like all of us, or did 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 you start playing sooner, or later? When did you start playing the the, the game? I started playing football about when I was about seven years old. My mom put me in this little Eva league, so that's when I started. To, that's when. I- And you're yep. cutting out on us a little bit there, but you we did hear you started playing about seven years old in the like in the youth league. Brandon, before I let you take 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 over here, 
Kyron, were you this big of a beast at seven years old as well? Yeah, we lost guys, it, him again. it looks like we lost him again, but it, it's okay. I mean, I mean, it, like he 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 sounds like a very well spoken, great young man. I mean, the the University of Missouri is going to be very very excited to get him on there. So uh, as Brandon Combs Jr. comes across the board, damn, ain't nobody <laughs> stopping him. No, like I mean, come on, six five, two fifty one, as a senior in high school. So he hasn't even hit the college weight room yet. He hasn't even hit that college food yet, right? I mean, every, everybody knows in college your first year you you put on at least 15 pounds. Looking at his body type, he doesn't need to put on any weight. He is going to add some outside linebacker skills, and he is going to tear it up. So my son, Brandon Jr., wants to uh, move out this way to Chicago, uh, and he wants to play football his senior year out here. Uh, so, Junior, I know you're listening right now. Uh this is what you're going to be going up against. This is football, um, so. <laughs> so I, I hope you're ready, man. I well, hope you're and ready. If you, and if you're anything like your dad, you're five. You you are five nine, five eight tops. I mean, so yeah. Yeah. let's let's say you are playing tailback, right? And you are in a passing down, and Kyron Montgomery comes off the edge untouched. Are you putting your nose in front of him? Well, See, he's more of an offensive lineman, (laughs) so he's got to block Kyron Montgomery. (laughs) That's that's not good. Junior, if you want to play real ball, come down here to Southern Indiana, and I will put you in the position to win, and I'll get you to college. Like, that is what I tell my guys. If they they buy into my system here, and, like, I'll get you to the where you want to go. But he's willing to do it. (laughs) Yeah. I mean. All right. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, just like just looking at these highlights. I mean, I mean, like I, I, got, I didn't watch these before the game, or sorry, be uh, for the show. But yep. he is he is inside, he is outside, and he uses his hands really well. Like, look at that. he is engaging. He takes off blocks, shuffles, side shuffles, uh, and then boom, he is in the hole making tackles. He's Brandon, a man you, amongst boys, man. Like, look at that. First of all, number 99 is the best defensive line number. And, and look at that. Just, he is fast, too. Like, fast for those. And look at that. Circled up. That He cuts in. Boom. Shuffles down. Oh, man. I would love to have him. Oh, Missouri, you guys got a freaking steal on this guy. Combs. Like, I know you are a Bears fan. You guys know defense. This guy. Whew. Look, man. And not only do we know defense, but we know defensive ends. And right. and this kid looks like like he's going to be a beast. Uh, I can't wait to watch him at Missouri and, and see what he brings to the table, man. It's it's something it's something that's going to be fun to watch for sure. Yeah, and uh, and and like we talked, what was it? Was it yesterday or two or two days ago about the SEC as a like 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 as a whole? And obviously, mm-hmm. the Missouri Tigers are are in the SEC. And Kyron is going to be playing in the SEC. So I made a poll over here on the YouTube, youtube.com forward slash man hour. I said, is the SEC the best college football conference? Simple yes or simple no. It's It seems to be having a little bit of error going through. So let me go ahead and refresh the page and we'll talk about it. But th- th- there it goes. It, hopefully it goes through here in a minute. But Brandon, like I mean, like we don't have, didn't, didn't have time to discuss it by like any means. But is the SEC the best conference? Uh, look, man, it, it's not the best conference. It's got two of the best teams in the country in its conference, though, um, year in and year out with, with Alabama, LSU, uh, Florida. Um, so I, I, I don't say it's the best conference, but it's – you know, it, to be honest with you, every conference is that way, though. Every conference has those two teams that typically run the conference, and every once in a while, you get a surprise team that comes in and takes them out. Right. Um, but it, I, college football is so it, so spread evenly, I think, amongst all of college football, amongst all the conferences, to be honest with you, with the exception yeah. of you have over the last, you know, five years, ten years, you have Alabama and everybody else. Clemson's kind of snuck in there. Um, and, th- you know, th- they're in 
at that point over the last, you know, I don't say about probably six, seven years, um, has been Clemson. But there, there's always teams that can can sneak up on you. So the so the one thing that is really helping college football right now is that they are. It's like let's be honest. It is the fact that ESPN airs damn near every game. Like it was yeah. about uh, it was it was about a month ago. I watched Pittsburgh State take on uh, North like North <laughs> North North Texas Southern Christian yeah. Baptist Church, right? So <laughs> Pitt State is a Division two school out of Kansas. They're yep. in the southeast corner of Kansas. They're Pitt State Gorillas. I was recruited to go there, but I decided to go the JUCO route first and then go to Division One. Which you know, like honestly, looking looking back on it, I would have loved to play with them. But like, I wanted to be on TV, right? Like, like mm-hmm. you want to be on TV to show out for your mama, right? That's what it comes down to at the at the end of the day. And now yep. with the tech, and like now with the technology that we have, we have the SEC network, we have the ACC network. Uh, Mike is a big component of the Longhorn Channel, right? So, uh, <laughs> so, so, like now, you don't have all these five star recruits, all these four star recruits, like Kyron, having to go to Alabama to be seen, right? He can, he can go to uh, NDU. He can, he, he, he can go to Indiana State or in Missouri, right, and still be seen on national TV, get seen by all these scouts. So. I mean, definitely the talent pool is getting spread out among all conferences conferences now. But this mm-hmm. year in college football, looking at it, the Big Ten, they are dominant because of the fact, not because of Ohio State. Yes, they're good. Indiana was good, but now their quarterback tore, their, uh, he tore his ACL. Uh, but the fact is that we are seeing teams that never before have beaten anybody. We're seeing Northwestern do things. We're seeing Wisconsin uh Iowa, right? I mean, yeah. all, all, all these schools are beating down the big boys, Michigan State. Right. It, Michigan, Dude, that's why I love Penn watching yeah. when when these big schools go down to these Division two schools that are coming up and, they look, this is their Super Bowl. Yeah. This is their bowl game. They, they might go 1-15, but they're going 1-15 with that one win over you, and, and they're satisfied with right. it. So, so I love watching uh, games like that. It was my junior year at Kansas State. We played a team called North Dakota State. Have you ever heard of North D- North Dakota State? I have heard of them. So at the time, they had not made the run of like all their uh, Division Two national championship games. Right? Uh, yep. Nobody knew who they were. But this big green machine came into Manhattan, <laughs> Kansas, and we all stroll out of the tunnel like, "Oh, this is going to be a freaking cakewalk, right?" <laughs> Dude, this Division Oops. Two school laid the smackdown on us it was like 42 to 14 at a blink of an eye we're like what the hell just happened we yeah. literally paid the school a million dollars to come down from north dakota to manhattan kansas to give us our first l of the season <laughs> it was it, it was not fun at all not at all so <laughs> yeah uh, but now we have the north dakota uh, state coaching uh, chris Kleiman over there this is his second or third year over at Manhattan, so very, very happy to have him. So, guys, before we uh, before we head to a quick little break, I want to thank Kyron for jumping on as like like as he could. Uh, we talked to him a lot pre 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 show, and everything that he said was yes sir, no sir, very very well spoken, very well uh, mannered individual. Not 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 what I, what I was expecting from a, a defensive end. To be honest, like I figured, a <laughs> what, defensive end. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> because defensive players are a different breed, man. We are mean mfers, right? Like we, okay. so I mean, I mean, like honestly, Colin. Have you ever listened to Khalil Mack talk? No, I haven't. Khalil Mack to. is is gold on is the he? mic, dude. But but he he is one of those guys who is is very polite and, and yeah. But he is he is hilarious. He's just got a great great personality so, there are not some all people defensive that ends just, are that way well you have to be great so like on the field to be great you have to be a bad m effort like you have to just come to the mo- come to the field angry but once you step off the lines I mean you got to be nice and humble and yada 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 right but yeah, yeah, yeah at the at the end of the day it is what it is so brand let's take a quick little break mike should be joining us after the break here and in, in, in like he a just texted he's not gonna make it 
Oh, he's not going to make it. That's okay because we got some shop talk heading out on the other side of the break. So if you guys want to talk about anything in the chat, let us know what you want to talk about because it is Wednesday. It is shop talk. So let's get on it, guys. We'll right after this quick little break, we'll talk some shop talk. Right back, man hour, man hour. Go. You know that that's us when we talk about sports. Giving you facts on hill to the core. Tune in, we need the support. One hour too short, tell us some more. No, your station not dropping no music. Starts like Adidas, but Nike just do it. Then four in the fourth, we go for the win. Michael, two seconds, we taking it in. Buck, Mike, and Combs, you know what's going on. Man, now we're at the dark. No LA, we the big spark. No fourth and inches won't cut short. Got the best talking this all sports. Buzzing more than buzz beaters. We coming live all through your speakers. Go. And welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buckhots with Brandon Combs t- tonight. Brandon, every time I hear that song, like uh-huh. I-, I-, I just find something new about it that I that I like. Jay Tiggs did a great job on the intro, and the full version of the song is dropping next week. So if you guys are interested in finding that on iTunes or, or Spotify, simply keep following this page. I will drop the link as soon as it releases. And I know Brandon, you're going to be the first one to download it, aren't you? Oh, you damn right. I'm pumped, Anything man. that says his name, golden. <laughs> <laughs> so absolutely. So it is time for some shop talk. And guys, if you want to talk anything, just just let us know in the comments section here, and uh, and you know, and we will talk some shop talk. So, Brandon, let's let's talk about this Wednesday night football game that just happened. The Pittsburgh yeah, Steelers Wednesday beat afternoon. The <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. So it started like at two forty in the afternoon, uh, which. Are you a yeah. fan of that? So, I, look, I'm not a fan of midweek football at all. I don't even like the Thursday night game. And I really don't like how they handled this situation. They kept moving it back, kept moving it back. The, right. the Everybody was thinking they were moving it back so that, you know, they can get uh, which you they, know, which they uh, were. Lamar to play. Which they were. And Come on. Ultimately, RG3 plays anyway. So, look, I, I don't understand – what the NFL is doing this year with COVID. Like, I, I really don't. I, I don't know why this game got moved all the way to Wednesday when you made the Denver Broncos play on Sunday. I don't understand. We're going to have a Monday night triple header. Um, oh, no, no. It's only a double header because they, they, they moved the Cowboys Raven games to a Tuesday now. So, wow. oh, oh, so, so now so. they're playing. So the Ravens yeah. get an extra day and the Steelers get screwed and have to. All right. So either way, both of these teams having to play on Wednesday and now having to play on Monday and Tuesday, like it just, I I don't know, man. It's, I the NFL has done an absolutely awful job at this COVID thing, and they are seriously all about the money. If they ever again say they are about players and player safety, they are lying, and they should get kicked under their teeth for lying. Yeah, so I was watching um, old uh, uh, Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp earlier today. Like yep. I usually like, I put on one of those just for just just for some background noise. Like you know, while, how like, can you even listen to that for background? Shannon Sharp <laughs> is the worst analyst I have ever heard in my entire freaking life. Five minutes of that guy makes me want to start stabbing puppies. <laughs> like I I can't do it. Uh, so, so the so the reason why I brought that up is is because of the fact of he said something that was very intriguing to to me because they were talking and they were talking about the game and like how the game kept moving back, moving back, and moving back. And I believe it was like Nick Wright. Uh, he is a guy on uh, FS1 as well. He's from Kansas City, huge huge yep. Chiefs Chiefs fan, and. Nick Wright said, "If this was any other team, this game wouldn't have been wouldn't have been moved back. It 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 would have been played Thursday night, meaning the the Ravens yeah. or so, yes, meeting the meeting the Ravens. So so let's say it was Steelers Browns and the Browns had uh, Odell Beckham Jr. out, Landry Jones, uh, Baker, and some defensive guy that had COVID, right." They would right. have played that game because it is the Cleveland Browns and what have they done for you lately, right? The yeah, reason but... why the reason why the NFL pushed it back so much is because of the fact that they, that they wanted the MVP on the field. Like, let's be honest. 
They wanted the MVP on the field. They wanted somebody to knock off the Steelers because they want the Ravens to be the Cinderella story. I mean, what they were fourteen and two last year. They got knocked out by the Titans. They want them back in the playoffs. But that, and they, and they're the Cinderella story either way, though. I mean, if you make them play last Thursday and they lose, and then Lamar comes back this week, and and they start winning, and they somehow make the playoffs, they're still your Cinderella story either way. I don't think that that may I. I'm I'm not so sure that it was for Lamar. I'm not so sure that it was for I one individual player. I do think it was for the money. Um and and trying to get the best players ready for this game and they weren't going to be able to do that. I think Baltimore would have had a whole lot less players on the field. Uh, I don't think it was just about Lamar. It was about the fact that they were running rampant with positive COVID tests, and there would have been more right. than just Lamar out. Um, so, so, so I, I, I get that, but but then I'm going to trump you if it's all about player safety. Why are they? Why is the NFL making the Denver Broncos play with a ninth string I, wide receiver? Like, if you I want agree. player say, say safety, that was the yeah. most. Unsafe. Well, that's thing the thing. I don't think do. it was about player safety. I, I think it was about getting the most players on the field um, to field a good team and make it a good game because that's what they wanted. Um, and you didn't get. You weren't going to get that out of Denver no matter what. There's nobody that Whoa, they could have put on the on. game. Denver's still in a playoff race now. The Denver Broncos have an opportunity to make the playoffs still. If if they aren't they like four and eight? Well, they are now, but if 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 they would have beat the Saints, they would have been five and seven, and hot in that playoff race. Yeah, but like, I, I think they I think they only I think they only want one seven and nine team in the playoffs, <laughs> and, <laughs> and and they're getting that out of the NFC East. So, well, um, I mean for for the Broncos to make the playoffs in the AFC, they 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 would have to at least or so they're so 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 the Broncos are actually four and seven now. So they so they would have been. Five and six, a game below five hundred. In the and AFC, the you're going to have to win out. You're going to have to be yeah. nine to seven at least. Yeah. So, which you know, if 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 they would have won, they would have had an opportunity to be nine and seven. So yeah. Kyle Kelly says Denver is going nowhere, and I agree. If the Broncos would have made the playoffs, they would have been a first round exit. I Kyle, agree. what's going on, buddy? I agree with that wholeheartedly. But the simple fact of the matter is, is that they still had a chance to make make it to the playoffs. And as a young team, a you know a a new coaching staff, that is momentum on to the next season. But the simple fact but that basically there's they, they two things make- in there is that nobody cares about Denver right now because they don't have any names. Nobody's going to watch their playoff game anyway. Drew Locke and and yeah okay and. The other, the other part of it is nobody wants to travel to Denver to play a playoff game. So, well, so they wouldn't be, be, be because the Chiefs are winning that division. So they'll, yeah. they'll be on the road. No, I, I, so, I don't think that the the Broncos had any chance, man. Yeah. So, so Kyle Kelly does bring up a great point. They are missing a lot of pieces. Yes, they are. They're out. Cortland Sutherland, which I think he tore ACL week two or week three. They're out. Yeah. Vaughn, uh, uh, Vaughn Miller. They're like, uh, and then like Drew, and then Drew, Drew Locke was out for four or five weeks. Out five, 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 four or five weeks as like as well. But what story would that have been? The Denver Broncos make it to the playoffs after. After having their four string quarterback on the field because Drew yeah. Locke got uh, Drew Locke was hurt and then the backup was hurt and then the, uh, and, the, and, the and, and and so I mean how much the, fun would it have been to see a, a a healthy Denver Broncos team beat Taysom Hill and the Saints because Taysom Hill is a garbage quarterback and James Winston is them, better. I actually had them beating the Saints with a quarterback. I mean, like me, like even their yeah. second string quarterback. I think they would have. I think they would have. At least hung with them, right? I mean, like it, right. what, it was a thirty-one to three. Like it yeah. definitely wouldn't have been that type of score because they would have completed some passes. Uh, so Brett that would have been uh, thirty-one to seventeen. <laughs> but still, <laughs> it still still would have been a little bit more res- more respectable, right? I mean, right, it's, right. Like it, it is just the fact that the well, what's the word I'm looking for? The NFL. You know how people say they are blackballing Colin Ka- Ka- Kaepernick from coming. To coming back into the NFL, right? 
yeah, yeah. the NFL basically blackballed Denver Broncos saying you are not making the playoffs because yeah. we want the Ravens in there. No, I agree. They, the NFL handled it poorly. The NFL has handled the entire COVID thing poorly. They have had no plan in place for any team that has had a COVID outbreak other than, all right, we're going to push you back a day. Okay, you know, you're still breaking out. All right, we'll push you back another day. Oh, okay, you're still positive. All right, we'll push you, push you back to Wednesday. But we have to play in the afternoon because we can't miss the tree lighting ceremony on NBC. <laughs> Yeah. On Wednesday night, because we we have to hear you know all the you know the singers that they're gonna have you know in front of the tree. Give I'll me a damn break, of, man. I I gotta be curious of like what the ratings are for this uh, Wednesday game. Like, were they the worst rating ever, or, or, or like, or were they the were they the best? Like, 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 like I just you know what like, I would compared. love is if that day NFL Wednesday game still outdraws or or they get better ratings on that day NFL game on NBC than they do the tree lighting. <laughs> that would be funny. that's what I would like. Here, let me let me let me look it up. Uh, NBC. So we talked. Uh, we talked yesterday. We were talking a little bit of baseball, and I right. said we were talking, and somebody had said, uh, asked me about Chris Bryant, and I said I won't be surprised if Chris Bryant and Kyle Schwarber are gone this year. I th- I'm pretty sure both of them are going to be gone. Well, right before we came on the show, uh, the the Cubs non tendered uh, Kyle Schwarber, so he is now a free agent. So I was actually going to ask you that. Like, what does this tendering and non tendering mean? So if you tender them an offer, uh, if they are in the final year of their uh, f- uh, their rookie deal, you have to tender them a uh, an offer, um, a qualifying offer. And if they don't accept the qualifying offer, they become a free agent, but they're a restricted free agent. And you, if somebody picks them up, you get a draft pick for them. Okay. Um, if you don't tender them an offer, they're an unrestricted free agent, they can sign with whoever. Um, so I would not be surprised to see Kyle Schwarber, man, Boston Red Sox fans. I would be all over this. You want this guy as your DH. He would destroy Fenway park, destroy Fenway park. So the reason that I ask you this question is, is because we were talking baseball last night and we were talking the catcher, his name's in my mind, DJ, uh, right. Uh, what's his name? Yeah. Yeah. LeMahieu. Uh, yeah. So, and Mike said that he would be a perfect fit in New York. You said absolutely not. They have one of the best catchers. Oh, you're talking like, about Rio Muto. Like, Muto. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so, and then I had an alert come over my phone this afternoon uh, saying that the Yankees tendering Gary Chanchez, which you said he's a top catcher and the like in the league. Do you yep. think Gary? Do you think Gary Chanchez is going to leave New York? Sanchez, um, but yeah, I don't think he leaves New York. I think they find a way to keep him. If they sign Real Muto, man, I just I don't know why you would do that for one because he's not. You're gonna get Gary Sanchez on a much better hometown discount than you're gonna get Real Muto. Real Muto is 28 years old. He's looking for his big contract. He's looking for his payday. Right. Sanchez is like 25, 26. You can get him on another three to four year deal and let him become a free agent again when he's 30, where he can look for that big contract. And Gary Sanchez, to me, he can be just as good as Real Muto. I just think that Gary Sanchez has some growing to do at the catcher position. Um, but he's still, to me, Gary Sanchez is a top five catcher in the league, offensively and defensively. So I'm not so sure I would go away from that, but... That's what they're looking to do. I would have done what the Cubs did last year with uh, with Wilson Contreras. I would have said, "Look, you know, you're you're about to become a free agent. We instead of tendering you a contract, we're going to give you a four or five year extension for more money than you've ever seen in your entire life. You'll be able to take care of your family just fine for the rest of your life, but it's not the biggest contract you'll ever see. And in five years, when you're 29, 30 years old." You can go after whatever you want to go after. And if we have it, we'll give it to you. But if not, then good luck. So this is my first Major League Baseball like uh, off season that I'm really paying to like all uh, pay paying attention to like all these signings and, and like yep. stuff, stuff like that. So is so is so is a tendering like e, e is it e, e equivalent for franchise tagging in the NFL? Um no, because you can turn down a, a tendered contract. You can turn down um, a franchise tag too, right? I don't think you can. I think if they franchise tag you, you're stuck because 
So the Bears were going after, they really wanted Robbie Gold, and it was known that Robbie Gold wanted to come back to Chicago. So the 49ers used their franchise tag on Robbie Gold and blocked him from becoming a free agent, which is, I mean, who the hell uses their franchise tag on a freaking kicker? But they did it, and, I mean, they're 3-11 and or some shit like that now. (laughs) <laughs> actually, they are <laughs> they're still battling for a playoff spot too. I I actually think they're close to five 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 hundred almost. No, they're in last place but, in that division. But since week twelve, the longest NFL week ever is finally over. It started Thursday morning at eleven thirty and just ended here at six thirty Wednesday. So almost a full week uh, for week twelve. We're finally going to get into week thir- thir- thirteen, Brandon. And on the yep. other side of the break, we are going to break down Week 13. Pick us some, pick us some games, pick some teams to watch, and uh, maybe Let's make some this. bets. Make some, make some bets, so guys. We're going to take a quick little break, and we'll be right back right here on the Man Hour. Choo 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 choo. You don't be every time, no. I would like to personally welcome you to Man Hour. Out the dark, say that thing. Why bring you the host, Mike, Buck, and Cone? You know they come to the stage. Sports talk, then what you about to hear right here? I second that. Go. You know that it's us when we talk about sports. That's Giving you facts on the field to the core. Uh, Tune in, we need the support. One hour too short, tell us some more. Oh no, your station not dropping no music. Starts like Adidas, but Nike just do it. Then four and the fourth, we go for the win. Michael, two seconds, we taking it in. Buck, Mike, and Combs, you know, you know what's going man. on. Man, now we're out the dark. No man. LA, we the big spark. No fourth and inch, won't cut short. Got the best talking, it's all sports. All Buzzing more than buzz beaters. We coming live all through your speakers. Go. And welcome back to the Man Hour. We are getting ready to talk some Week 13 NFL moving forward. But before we get into that, guys, check out ThriveFantasy.com. Right now, if you head over to ThriveFantasy.com, use the promo code MANHOUR. They will match up to $50 on your first deposit. Tonight on the Prop Bets, I won damn near $400 tonight. My account sitting at $455 right now. And it was it was a simple $25 Entry fee and over under, and I won almost four hundred dollars. I was I sitting at fourth place, Brandon. It's Christmas <laughs> time. It is Christmas. It's time. Christmas time, <laughs> and you just told your wife that you have an extra four hundred dollars in the account. Well, and I just got football money too <laughs> because, like, I coach high school ball, and we just got our checks too. So our uh, our account is sitting a little. <laughs> yeah, we are big balling until. Oh, car payment. Oh, hey, can I borrow payment. some milk money? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I will send you ninety-seven cents for like milk. I, 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 I got you there. But thrivefantasy.com, guys, you can download that on iOS and Android devices, or you can do what I do and go to the website. We we found out tonight that they do have different props on the website as well. If you don't like the twenty-five dollar entry fee, they have a dollar entry fee on that. Which which tonight I won. Let me look at my account on that. I I won sixty-five dollars on a dollar bet on the over under as well. So thrivefantasy.com, guys. Promo code man hour. They match up to fifty dollars on your first deposit. So Brandon, it is finally finally. Week 13 of the NFL season. We don't have a Thursday night game because it got moved back. Because uh, I believe the Cowboys and Ravens were supposed to play Thursday night. And I guess the Ravens can't play back-to-back back, back to back night games. So that game got moved to Tuesday. That game got moved to Tuesday. So let's talk a little bit of week thir- 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 13 here. It does start Sunday, 1 p.m. The Saints traveling to Atlanta to take on the Falcons. Players to watch in this one, man. Um, not Taysom Hill. Uh, <laughs> he is definitely not one you want to watch. Um, Jameis Winston is going to be one you want to watch this weekend because I feel like this is the week where the Atlanta Falcons are going to jump out big. They're riding that high after that big win last week. And I think that they're going to jump out big on uh, the Saints. And the Saints aren't going to be able to do much with Taysom Hill. And they're going to lean on um, on Jameis Winston Somewhere around halftime. So, look, bring him in, see what you can do, and watch him lead a fourth quarter comeback <laughs> over the Saints, and never look back, baby. So the so the one thing that kind of has me intrigued about this game is that this is the third game of of Taysom Hill being quarterback, right? They yeah. they they now have 
film on Taysom Hill. We know yep. he is. He, we know he is not going to lie, lie at the stat category, passing the ball through the air. Right, he is. He is basically going to be what RG three was tonight. Not yeah. really a lot of, not of like anything. Pretty much like a shell of a quarterback. Almost. With that. With that being said, we have said it on the show many, many times on the Man Hour that mm-hmm. the fact is that division games are something else. This is a division game. The Saints know the Falcons. The Falcons knows knows the Saints. There's film on Taste Taysom Hill. I like the Atlanta Falcons in this game because I told you guys a couple weeks ago that the Saints were going to drop at least one or two games with Drew Brees out, and I think this is one of those games. Like this is, you can call it a trap game all you want, but I don't think it's a I don't think it's a trap game because if you cannot get up for a division foe, something's wrong. Though, like the the way the Falcons yeah. beat down the Raiders last week, the Falcons might be clicking like a little bit. They are looking to play some spoiler, and what other team to spoil? The Saints, the division leading Saints at nine and two, knock them down a few now. Ashes, right? Yeah, look, I I think that the Saints are gonna go get down big in this game. I think it's going to be something like I don't know, maybe twenty one to three at halftime, and they're going to have to go to Jameis Winston. And I, I think if they do that, if they do that, the Saints will come back and win that game. If they do not do that, the Falcons are going to roll them, and they're so, going to roll them big. I have said it many, many times on the show that the Falcons are by far the best three-quarter team out there, uh, but it's obviously a four-quarter game. So over here on the M&M marketing chat line, Kyle Kelly says, Matt Ryan is the most wasted talent ever. How many times can you throw for 5,000 yards and not have a winning record? Well, Jameson or James Winston did it almost five, 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 five years and like in a row. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah Jay, look, he, Matt Ryan is not wasted talent. I, I mean, he's he's gotten them to a Super Bowl. Um, that defense, man, just lets them down year after year, and they've had some bad coaching in Atlanta. If you want as to well. talk about wasted talent, Julio Jones. Julio Jones, yeah. I believe, has over fifteen hundred hundred yards in every. No, yeah, it was, yeah, it's it's over fifteen hundred yards every one of his NFL careers, but he never finds the end zone. That yeah. is wasted, 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 wasted talent. He's he's like six five, six six, can jump out of a freaking gym. Larry Fitzgerald. Throw, yeah, I mean shit. Yeah. He's getting. So, that's what he. That's what's going to happen to Julio Jones. He's going to end up being Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and for. Who would you rather have a Super Bowl win, Larry Larry Fitzgerald or Julio Jones? Like, who would you rather see? I would. I mean, I, I want to obviously you want to see Larry. I mean, if you're not rooting for Larry Fitzgerald, you are just you're just not human because Larry Fitzgerald, man, is one of the best people in all of the game. You can say that about and, Julio Jones too. I mean, they're like they are they are straight edge. They come to work. They don't complain. Yeah. No, I and I don't have any problems with Julio. I I just think Larry Fitzgerald's done it for so long. It would be so nice to win it, see him win one. And in right. five years, I'd like to see Julio win one. But right now, this year, I mean, come on, man. Uh, it's it's Larry Fitzgerald's only got so much time left. I think he's older than Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he might be mean shit. He, <laughs> like I think he's like fifteen, sixteen years in the league, like at least. Yeah. Uh, so Kyle Kelly says that is that is what I mean. Uh, referring to Matt Ryan, but Matt Ryan and Matthew Stafford need to go to different teams. Yeah. Brandon, that 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 is a great question. What team would you like to see Matt Ryan on if he's not with the Falcons? Uh, the Chicago Bears. Chicago Bears. Uh, that would be a good pick. Same thing with Matthew Stafford. I I like Matthew Stafford going to the uh, to the Dallas Cowboys in the off season when the when the rumor was out that the like the Lions were looking to shop Matthew Stafford, but I don't think Matthew Stafford will ever leave. Yeah, Do I don't think I, he, he's a lion uh, for life. Yeah, and and like yeah. Matt and Matt Ryan, I think he he is a Falcon for life as like like as well simply because of, of the contract that he has, and the Falcons yeah. are are obligated to so much money. But in a fantasy world, I would like to see them go to uh, teams that are, like, stacked, you know? Somebody like the Cowboys. Some, somebody like uh, Tampa Bay, right? Uh, just yeah. just so – just because, like, these guys are just like with Larry Fitzgerald and, and like, Julio Jones. Yeah, but see, you are, know, teams that, teams that are 
a quarterback away. Like not not just the Bears, but you've got teams out there that are really just really a quarterback away. You look at yeah. um, the the Cleveland Browns. They are a quarterback away. Baker Mayfield is not the answer there. You look at uh, the Kansas City. No, I'm just joking. You are the wait, like, <laughs> the New are England, the, the are New England the Patriots. Patriots a, are the yeah. Patriots a, like a quarterback away? Yeah, the Patriots are. Yeah, well, I mean, the Patriots don't really have a whole lot of offensive weapons. Uh, the Bears have, have the Bears with, like, have Tom weapons Brando, with a running back. They just don't have an offensive line. Right. The the Patriots are lacking all of that. They have no wide receivers, no offensive line, and no running back. So they're they're but a little I bit think, further than. A but I think away. Bill Belichick could put in a system for Matthew Stafford or Matt Ryan to make them successful and win. A I lot think of games. Matt Ryan in in. Uh, Cleveland would make them a, a legit contender for the Super Bowl. Yeah, you know, honestly, I thought the same thing with like RG three when like he was there for like five games. I'm like, oh, yeah, I've never thought there. that about RG three. But I mean, like the Browns, <laughs> the 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 Browns are a staple of a mediocre mediocrity team. Yeah, you they're can literally have, three and nobody even believes them. <laughs> you can literally have a Pro Bowl <laughs> roster on their team. And they're yeah. going to be first round exit in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, Moving yeah. on to the next one, we do have the Detroit Lions traveling to Chicago to take on the Bears. Players are watching this one, Brad. Uh I, I mean, you always want to see if Mitch Trubisky can do anything other than throw perfect passes in the end zone to the other team. Um, <laughs> uh, Mooney, right is, side, is one. Darnell Mooney is a a huge, great acquisition for the bears you got the kid is fast 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 he gets open downfield i can't man dude i saw a video on youtube the other day and um it was darnell mooney's moves and he is like breaking ankles and he is wide open and he gets overthrown on every damn play <laughs> it was it was so sad to watch um but i'm going to take the lions in this one um i agree with kyle kelly even though he's a green bay packer fan um <laughs> I am. I'm going with the Lions, probably by ten, uh, if not more. So, uh, I think you guys forgot that the Lions just cleaned house. They even fired their freaking IT guy. So the Lions have a brand. Oh new yeah, you're right. So by twenty seven, then. <laughs> so the Lions have a brand <laughs> new coaching staff. Nick Foles was back at practice today for Bears camp. So, are we going to have they, a they quarterback named Mitch controversy as starter? Well, yeah, but I'm saying, but are we going to have a quarterback controversy? Is Mitch going to throw one interception? And, and, and the, like, are you guys a like a loud fans up there? Look, the, the no, there's no fans in the stands. So the problem yeah. with the Bears is they can't score more than 17 points. They don't have the offense to score more than 17 points. So yes, Kyle Kelly, I am betting against my team. They can't <laughs> score. They can't put the ball in the end zone. So as long as you can score 20 points, which the Detroit Lions can score 20 points. They're winning that game, and it's it's not going to be close. I I'd probably say probably thirty one to thirteen Detroit. See, I think it's going to be a close game because it is it is a division game. The Bears are at home. It's going to be cold. Like it's, I mean, I'm, I'm they own cold, Detroit cold too. They do own yeah, Detroit. So I'm picking the Bears. I'm, I'm picking them by three. Thir- thirteen to ten is the final. Uh, now I know they're going to lose. Not, not because <laughs> of Matthew Stafford or anything. It, it, like it, it, it's just the fact that the, the Lions have new coaching staff. They have new yeah. general manager. They have new IT guy. So, I mean, yep. they are still trying to find their treading uh, like a tad bit. But I do think the Lions will win two more games this season and do and go six and ten. Uh, so just flip the ten and six I said earlier in the offseason. So they'll still be six and ten, just ten and six, just backwards, right? And as long as the Bears win one more game than them this year, that's all I care about. Next up, we have the uh, Browns at the Titans. This, this game's kind of intriguing. So, this is a tough one. So, the Titans are a very good team, but I think them and the Browns are on the same level. I just think less people are paying attention to the Browns because they're the Browns. The Browns' running game is just as good as the Titans' running game. And they got two people back there. Yeah. I, I'm going to go with the Browns in this one. I think it's going to be a close one. I think you're going to have a drag them out fight, and I think it's going to be 20 to, 20 to 15, 20 to 17, something in that ballpark. So I'm going to go with the uh, the Browns in a close one. I'll pick the upset there. 
So this is the battle of, I think, the most overrated eight and three teams in the NFL. I mean, Tennessee's a five and a half point favorite, too, by the way. Yeah, which is crazy to me, but I guess maybe because they're at home. I I don't. I actually it is up to six and a half now per ESPN. Uh, but I think Tennessee has been a, been a lot of smoke and mirrors too. To be honest, like people have been so high on them because of the fact that they went to the AFC Championship game last year. You guys know why they went to the AFC Championship game last year? It's because they got hot at the right time. the The problem with with the with the Titans right now is I think they got hot too early. So with that being said, I do like It's the hard Titans. to say with King Henry, man. Right. It's, I mean, it's hard to say because King Henry, I know you're down on King Henry. I know you think that he's only a, a, an eight game back. Okay. Let but, me, let me, def- let me defend myself here real quick. Okay. This is Henry's what? Fifth year in the league, right? Correct. The previous four seasons, look at the first half of the, of like of the year, he, he is getting fifty yards a game, forty yards a game, sixty right, and then the nine games plus he, he is getting his hundred and fifty, hundred and thirty yard game. So he, like he came on late this year, he came on early. Like I, I think he has like one game. He, he was pretty damn good last week. But yeah, 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 because the Colts were missing four guys on like on the defense. But I think he has only had one game underneath a hundred yards so far. I think it was sixty eight or seventy eight games or, or or yards and and like that was versus a very, very good Pittsburgh Steelers team. With that being said, the life of a running back is only four to five years. Derrick yeah. Henry is, is is in his fifth year. They are giving him the ball twenty five times a game. Do you legitimately think that he is durable, on, like, like a like enough to carry them on to the playoffs? Uh, I am because he did it last year, man. What he did in the playoffs last year was absolutely phenomenal. But he, had he three also didn't games, come on and I think he had like four hundred and eighty yards rushing. Like, I he was he was phenomenal in the playoffs. So unless until he showed that he's. For me, when it comes to guys like that who show that they can perform in those spots, until they show me that they can't, I'm going to believe that they can. So, so I'm going to go with yes, that he could carry them to a playoff win or two. I still don't think they go very far in the playoffs, but I think that King Henry is de- de- more than capable of carrying them, and there's nothing to, that has shown you yet that they're not. Yeah, which which I totally agree with that. Like, I want to a to address Joe here, and, and and like Joe said that I said King King Henry isn't 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 very good. He's in this this and this. I am not saying that King Henry is a top running back in the league this 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 top year. Top what? Top what? Uh, right now he is easily the best running back in the league. Like okay. lot like. Like, unless you may want to throw a Chubb up there, you know, like a one A, two A. You're, you're missing right. Dalvin Cook too, man. What? But Cook has what? Cook got hot for three games there, and what has he done for you since? Not a whole lot, right? And I think yeah. he's hurt again. So, uh, so like what, what I'm saying about King Henry, this is the first time in his five year career that he has started hot game one and has carried it on now to week thirteen. So can he sustain his success to be determined? Like, obviously, yeah. but the life of a running back is four to five years. Look at DeMarco Murray for the Dallas Cowboys. His what his sixth year in the league, he was averaging twenty five touches a game. He went to the Titans, and you never heard from him ever, ever, ever yeah. again. I uh, looking at Kyle Kelly's comment here. Tannehill's no sleeper at all. He's very accurate. Don't sleep on Ryan Tannehill. Look, the problem I have with Ryan Tannehill is he's that guy who finds a way to make a mistake at the end of a game. He's the, he's that guy. The, he's that guy that will find a way to lose you the game. And so, I, look, I, I'm not blown away by Ryan Tannehill. I am blown away by King Henry. I do think King Henry can sustain it, like we're talking about. I do think that he. <laughs> that guy's a beast, man. Watching his workout videos, man, there is nothing yeah. that tells me that he's going to slow down. Are there teams out there that can stop him and slow him down and scheme to do so? Yeah, absolutely. I think the Pittsburgh Steelers are one of those teams. Right. Um, but I, I'm i not going to say that he can't carry them to a win over a team like Buffalo because I've already seen him do so. Uh, in Buffalo, I think he has one of the best 
front sevens in all of football. Uh, if you look at uh, who's also the Kansas City Chiefs, I think Ryan. I, I think that King Henry would absolutely demolish that team. Let's take the Green Bay Packers. Even Kansas though City the has NFC. a very underrated front seven. Their their secondary is not very good, and that's why yeah. teams score a lot of points on. But them. I just don't. Yeah, that's why I don't think I. You have to have a, a good secondary to be able to stop King Henry because he's going to get into your secondary. Um, and that's why the the Green Bay Packers they can't stop the run to save their lives. Right. So I, if if it ended up in a Super Bowl somehow where it was King Henry versus the Green Bay Packers, <laughs> I would take nice. King Henry to run for seven hundred yards and <laughs> right. score nine touchdowns and beat the Packers. So so uh, let me let me address that Ryan at that like that Ryan Tannehill comment that like you like you addressed there. So yep. this is Ryan Tannehill's like really. Because like, he came in what week nine last year, so like this is his first full year. So he has now played like a full sixteen games in a Tennessee Titan uniform. When he was with the Miami Dolphins, he had a head, he had a coach by the name of Adam Gaze, right? And we saw what Adam Gaze is doing in New York, not a whole lot. So Ryan Tannehill probably took three, four years back off of his career. So like so 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 like now like this year we are probably seeing a second year Ryan. And Hill, give him, yeah. get, get give him next year and maybe the year, the he, year after that. I think he might be a top ten quarterback in the league. Really? See, I he has he is very accurate, but he's to me he's he's definitely a game manager for sure. I liken him to um, what was his name there, uh, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> Kansas City Chiefs there. Yeah, he loves his backers. Um, he was a Kansas City Chiefs quarterback for a little while. Then he went over to um, – uh, where did he go? San, Fr- San Francisco. Um, or you could even call him like uh, the kid uh, – God, I, I'm so bad with names. The Washington uh, Redskins quarterback there. RG3? Bad leg. Or, no, or, oh, bad Al- leg. Alex Smith. Alex Smith, yeah, exactly. So Alex Smith he's an Alex Smith type to, quarterback. To the Chiefs, yeah. So he's just he's a game manager who will do enough, but I just can't count on him in a big game. The same way I couldn't count on Alex Smith in a big game. You are right about that. Yes, but so who has a top five winning percentage in the month of December and January since 2011? Alex Smith is number four on that list. How many Super Bowls has he won? Uh, he has won zero. I think I. I don't think that, did the uh, 49ers and and Kaepernick win that Super Bowl that year that Kaepernick led no. them to the Super Bowl. So yeah, he has zero rings. Yeah. So it, he's he's not. I don't know. He's just not that guy for me. I, I I'm not a big believer in Tannehill. Um. So. No. Yeah. I mean, only only time will tell. Let, let let me flip back over to week thirteen. Uh. The old uh, scoreboard wants to say we're still in week twelve still, which we technically still are. I mean, it's still still win, it's still Wednesday. We let's the talk Bengals. about that Vikings game. Okay, let's talk about that Vikings. Jacksonville Jaguars take on the Vikings one o'clock on C C E A B S. So I'm gonna take upset. the Vikings in this game. Um, the Vikings are gonna win this game, and you ready for this? Yeah. The Vikings are gonna beat the Buccaneers next week. They're gonna beat the Bears in two weeks. They're gonna beat Kendrick. the Saints. In week sixteen, and they're going to beat the Lions in week seventeen and win out and make the playoffs. Hmm. Take it to the bank. Would that make the boys over at Twist happy or upset? I think it will make them upset, and I would love every second of it. Um, because I want you to win, so you're so you're mad. Be, no, no <laughs> it, it, you know why is because the Bears aren't winning another game for the rest of the season, so the Bears are going to take the damn the the draft pick that they wanted. They're going to the playoffs, and they're going to end up, you know, with the twenty-first or twenty-second pick of the draft. Uh, and I'm going to love every second of it. Let's be honest; the Bears can have the first overall pick, and they'll pick a, a safety. Yeah, you no, know, you're no, they'll they'll pick that female <laughs> kicker from Vanderbilt Let's see, or which, Purdue, I, wherever he was. She do was. we want to do we want to go there? How do you get SEC Special Teams Player of the Week when you have one kickoff and it goes like twenty yards? Yeah, she kicked up all thirty yards and got player of the week. Um come on, come on. it's the same it's the same way that uh um what's her name there? One uh woman of the year, uh Kyler Jenner. So she <laughs> <laughs> So other 
Heather games happening in week 13. We were like, we had, we had the Bengals traveling to Miami. Uh, I think Miami wins, went, wins that one pretty handily. We had the Raiders taking on, taking on the Jets. Do you smell an upset there? No, the Jets are 0 and 16. I think they're, the Jets they're, win. They're bad. They're so I, bad. I, after no, that, the, Raiders the Raiders aren't good. Took, yeah, and there's know. no way they're losing to the Jets after that loss that they had. Last. If they lose to the Jets, then done. their season's done. Um, I if don't lose see the Jets, Gruden any win. If if they if they lose to the Jets, Gruden freaking hangs himself. Like, how do you lose to the Jets? Like, it, I just I I don't see it happening. Over here on the chat line, Kyle Kelly says, neither you could kick the ball six yards. You, like, you're probably – so, honestly, me and my wife went down to the high school, like, last year or two or two or two year or two year, years ago, and I was like, hey, babe, let's go kick some PATs. You do not realize how hard it is to kick a freaking PAT. And, and because, look, like, my fat <laughs> ass could kick a ball at least 12 yards. It might not get more than four feet off the ground, <laughs> but I could at least kick it 12 yards. Give me right. a break. Moving on to the next one, we have the Colts traveling to Houston. Do you think the Colts get upset? Um, I would love for them to get upset. Houston is the ah, team that, that could upset them. Um, don't say that, he said. Uh, no, I, I don't think the, the Colts get upset. I think that the Colts win this game. That defense is really, really good in Indy. Um, and they're and they're coming back. Although four starters are 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 back, and Houston yeah. is is without a uh, Will Fuller the fifth now because of PED. I think. Um, oh. uh, so, so yeah, circle I, I, I really circle mean. this game right here. You had the Rams taking on the Cardinals. This game, this is a got, big man? game for the Cardinals. A big this, game for the Cardinals. This they, is a game, big game for both of them. It, it's a must win for both teams. They've got the Cardinals have got to show. What are the the Rams are seven and four, right? Yeah, the Rams are seven and four, and the Cardinals are six and five right now. Yeah, I look. I the Cardinals really need this one. It's at home. I just don't think that they have enough to do it. I think they are on a really bad downward spiral right now. Kyler Murray's eyes, he looks like uh, the eyes of that I saw last year with yeah. uh, Mitch Trubisky. He just looks lost when he's at the line of scrimmage right now. I, I can't admit, I, I don't know why, because the first, you know, eight weeks of the season, I was like, man, this guy, he reminds me a lot of, of uh, Russell Wilson. So, what is going on right now? Why does he look so lost at the line of scrimmage? Why shoulder, is he having such a hard time reading defense? It's right now? it's his it's his shoulder injury that he's uh, he sustained versus the Seahawks about three weeks ago on that Thursday night game when he took that big hit. He's been he's been favoring that that shoulder so since. Who's and their then, backup? I don't know who their backup is to be Why, honest with you. You know, I they've already hit their bye week too, right? Uh, Every, yes. All the bye weeks are gone, so. I mean, their backup is Chris Strievler. Ever heard of him? Ugh, nope. No, never heard of him either. Well, maybe <laughs> maybe Dakota. we hear of him next week against the Giants. You give Kyler Murray a week off if you lose this game because I just you got the Giants, the Eagles, the, and the Forty ers left sandwiched in between your two Rams games, and you need if... you don't need much to beat the Giants. You don't need much to beat the Eagles. So, I just I got to see more out of Kyler Murray. If he's going to continue to play injured, uh, if, if the Cardinals injured, lose this game, play their injured. playoff hopes are 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 done. Let's be well, honest. They're six and six. Uh, the NFC, I think the well, the NFC is going to have one, you know, six and ten or seven and nine team out of the East. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess you're right. Yeah, you probably don't get another sub five hundred or even eight and eight team into the playoffs. Yeah. So I think you have to get ten ten wins to get into the playoffs this year, uh, unless you're a division winner. Then you had the yeah. giant. The Giants take taking on the Seahawks. That's the Seahawks by a lot. Eagles by uh, take 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 on the Packers. I'm taking the Packers. Are you taking the Packers? Yeah, Packers by the Packers are the to me still. And I know people are going to talk about the Saints. To me, the Packers are still the best team in the NFC. And you know, as a Bears fan, I hate to say it. I just yeah, they can't stop the run to save their freaking life. I mean, they are awful. Dreadful against them. When when David Montgomery is running for that many yards on you, you don't have you can't stop the run to save your life. And so, I yeah, Packers are the best team in the league. So Packers big. Then you have the uh, Patriots taking on the Chargers at LA. I'm thinking the Chargers. Yeah, Chargers are going to get a win there. Um, 
I, Patriots are six and ten team. I, I've said it all year long. Patriots are a six and ten team. And then the uh, Sunday night game, you had the Broncos take on the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm picking the Chiefs. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't pick the Broncos to beat you, me, and Kyle Kelly. So yeah, Chiefs all and day. Speak, speaking of Kyle Kelly, he 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 said, "Let the pro talk about the Packers." The <laughs> Packers will run the table to the Super Bowl. No, though Aaron Rodgers will find a way to lose it in the second round to the Atlanta Falcons or something. So we we are week thirteen into the NFL season. Who do you have representing in the Super Bowl now that the season is over half half halfway over? Uh, I am going to go with the Pittsburgh Steelers just because they're they're too damn good. Um, and I'm I'm going to stick with my pick of the Bucks in the NFC. I Tom Brady's going to find a way to get this done. They just handed him the play calling duties, uh, and so he's calling everything now. So. Look, I like it. I like the move. I'm going to stick with my preseason prediction and go with the Bucks. And I, I'm going to go with the Browns versus the Seahawks. I think the Browns get hot <laughs> at the right time. As I talk down on them, that being one, one I can't believe you said eight, that with a straight face. Eight, eight and three, three teams. I, I think Baker Mayfield learned, learns how to win moving forward. But guys, that's going to be it for the Man Hour tonight. Brought to you by Thrive Fantasy. Head over to thrivefantasy.com or you can download it on your iOS or Android devices. Use promo code MANHOUR and we will match up to $50 on your first deposit. That's thrivefantasy.com. Guys, you can also head over to manhour.com as well. Pick yourself up some merchandise. Got hats, hoodies, and t-shirts over there. See you guys tomorrow. Same time, same place. Tomorrow, Talk a little bit of UFC. So if you guys like some UFC, some MMA fighting, tune in tomorrow, 9 p.m. East Coast time right here on YouTube.com forward slash Mike and Mike. Man hour. <laughs>